In this lesson, I want to speak about the most common mistakes Revit API beginners make. I started teaching Revit API and PyRevit around three years ago, and I keep hearing about the same mistakes over and over. And that's okay. I've also made the same mistakes when I've started, but today I want to point out those mistakes and provide you solutions. So first of all, you become aware of these problems, and I'll show you how to stop making these common Revit API mistakes. And let's begin with a common mistake number one, and it's ignoring Python basics. I'm guilty of that myself. I've also started creating Revit add-ins without a solid understanding of Python. And my code was absolutely horrible. But once I got more comfortable with Python, I also got more comfortable with Revit API, as I would only need to focus on one thing at a time. And also, many people in my community has pointed out the same. And they instantly noticed the difference once they spent some time on Python basics and then they came back and continued their Revit API journey. So, to solve this issue, you have to focus on Python basics, until you feel comfortable making loops, writing functions, and just focus on the basics first. I can recommend you free courses on edX.org platform like CS50 Introduction to Programming with Python by Harvard or Introduction to Computer Science using Python by MIT. These are really good courses on ed edX.org. And also, there are plenty of courses on YouTube and I also made a video Python Basics for Revit users. I probably should update that one, but I hope you're still gonna find it useful. And then the second common problem I keep hearing about is overlooking Revit API documentation. When you open Revit API documentation for the first time, it's overwhelming to say the least. You can see thousands of classes, methods, and properties, and you don't even know what you need. But over time, you realize that Revit API is repetitive, and you just need to understand the core classes that you will use in every script, like filtered element collector, transactions, selections, and so on. And the rest you can pick up whenever you actually need it, but you need to understand how to read Revit API documentation to get the most out of it. I've made a deep dive into Revit API documentation for beginners, both on YouTube and my course platform, to explain you everything inside documentation and point you to what you need the most. All the links gonna be in the description under the video. And the next, the third common mistake is not reusing your code early. As you've heard already, good programmers code, but great programmers, they reuse code. And it's because this is the most efficient way to code. So I want to recommend you to start reusing your code as soon as possible. I know that it's great to quickly copy-paste your code from previous scripts, but if you do this too often, you definitely need to consider using PyRevit library. Imagine that you have a function that you use in nearly all your tools. It works great, but then you realize that you have to update it. You could go through all your scripts and look for the functions and manually update them one by one, or you could just go to your library folder, change it in one place, and then all your scripts that use this function will use updated version of this function. This will also teach you how to make your code more reusable, because you'll have to think how to combine a lot of functionality into a single function. But if you're a beginner, just start with small functions and slowly you will improve them. You don't have to create crazy functions right away. Just start small and slowly increase complexity. And if you learn how to reuse your code in PyRevit, I've already made a video in this free first module of this course, where I will explain you step by step how to do that. And now we are moving to the mistake number four, and this is ignoring code samples. PyRevit is open source, and so are all additional extensions, including 200 repositories on GitHub. Also, I provide a lot of snippets in my ebooks, PyRevit starter kit, on my website in the blog, newsletter, my Python snippet sections. So oftentimes you can find a lot of code that you can learn from and still like an artist to reuse in your own tools. So why do you keep reinventing the wheel? It's much quicker to figure out how existing snippets work instead of trying to rewrite them from scratch. That's like a superpower for all beginners. So start reusing existing code examples. First remember that you can hold Alt and click on any PyRevit tool, including all additional extensions like EF tools. Have a look inside, try to either learn something or find snippets that you might use one day and steal them. And now let's go to the next common mistakes beginner make and it's not backing up their code. I've just covered how to do that a few lessons before this one, but probably many of you decided to postpone it for some other day and haven't done it anyway. We all know that we should do this, but we all ignore the backups until one day we lose a chunk of data and we start regretting for not backing up earlier. I know that many of you have been there, and so was I, and it's always because of some stupid mistake. You just try to rush something, you delete not thinking through, and so on, and then your files are gone. So once you've started your PyRevit extension, find a workflow on how you will backup these files. You can use Dropbox, Google Drive to sync your folders to begin with, but GitHub is by far the best solution for backing up code. 
And you can get started with GitHub Desktop as it provides the most user-friendly experience. You don't even need to know much about Git. You can rewatch this video from the module one on how to backup and share your PyRevit code with the team to learn more about this. And after that, we're moving to mistake number six and it's ignoring other Revit versions. Every year we get a new version of Revit that comes with all the new features and so does Revit API. There are some new classes, methods, properties, but also Autodesk can remove different classes and methods from the newer versions, so you should be aware of that. It's very common to ignore other Revit versions, especially in the beginning. But once your office starts using another Revit version, some tools might not work correctly because of obsolete Revit API code or some other changes. And it's never a good idea to fix stuff in production. So make sure that you check your tools on multiple Revit versions and fix the code accordingly when needed. Once you find an issue across different versions, you can check Revit year with the app.version number and execute correct code for different Revit versions. I only have a video about this inside my course, but I've made a free copy for you so you can watch it for free. Just don't tell anyone about this. And now the next mistake number seven is not handling your errors. It's okay to code dirty during development, but ideally in the end, you need some form of error handling. You don't want users in your office to click on a button and then see a huge wall of red text. They will get afraid of that and stop clicking the button completely, thinking that they might harm the model somehow. So please, as a bare minimum, start using try and accept statements to catch your errors and suppress the error messages. You can also create an alert pop-up saying don't panic but something went wrong. Ask developer to fix it, because oftentimes it's actually quite easy to fix your errors once you know about them, but oftentimes users don't like to share this. So to avoid this, try to use try and accept statements to catch your errors, alert your users without scaring them, test your tools with various scenarios, and test multiple Revit versions. And this is gonna help you a lot in creating your tools. And now we're moving to the mistake number eight, and it's not remembering that Revit API uses feed as internal units. So whenever you read or write your values with Revit API, you have to use feed as internal units. I once tried to solve an issue with coordinates when my units did a match, but I've forgotten to convert meters to feed when I was printing the results, and I was comparing apples to oranges, and good luck debugging that. So here, you just have to remember that we have to work with feed in Revit API. And oftentimes you need to convert from feed to meters before printing them so you can see the right values in the console. For this, I will leave a code snippet on the screen so you can see how to convert units to and from internal. But in general, when numbers don't make sense, check what units do you use and oftentimes this will solve your issue. And lastly, we're moving to the mistake number nine. And now it's your turn to share a common mistake that you make in Revit API. Share your mistake in the comments or in the community. There are certainly other mistakes people make that I haven't mentioned in this video, and I want to hear more about them. As you've seen with the previous mistakes, I try to produce content and address common concerns and make it easier for you to learn Revit API. So please, write down your number one challenge or mistake that you make with Revit API that you want me to help you solve. This is a win-win-win for me, you, and the community as a whole, as I'm the guy who loves hearing more about Revit API issues so I can help you solve them. And that's it for the grand finale of module one of Learn Revit API course. I've given you eBooks by Revit Starter Kit and a ton of high quality tutorials to help you get started. And I would appreciate this if you could leave me a testimonial about your experience. Just share with me what helped you the most and if I managed to exceed any of your expectations. If you were to recommend this to one of your friends, what would you tell them? And how did it specifically help you? You can go to my website kudos.learnrateapi.com or check the link in the description. That would truly mean a lot to me and prove that all I've done here is not a fluff, but actually high quality stuff for any Revit API beginner. And if you want to learn more, you're more than welcome to check my Learn Revit API course. This is the most comprehensive training for Revit API and I work really hard on adding additional courses, modules and bonus content to the course alongside support in the community, which many people mentioned is already worth the price of the course. So I hope to see you inside my course one day or you can keep watching my free content on YouTube and keep reading my newsletter until one day you decide to get more. And lastly, my name is Eric Fritz and I wish you happy coding. Goodbye.